What What do you think of like um, of, of let's say angels and ghosts? Is there a difference between angels and ghosts? Because I have some stories. I have a mm-hmm. million throughout my life, but you know, stories in which um, I feel like I've been I had been tested. And and there's one and for for instance when I had just gotten out of the military, I was. I was working full time and going to school full time, and I had you know about two minutes to myself a day. And I was leaving class uh, one day, and I saw this old man in a wheelchair. Seemed I was leaving the university, and and uh, he seemed like he was lost. And I looked at him, but I'm running to my car, and I'm like, you know, crap, I got to get to work. But I looked at him again, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, the guy go back. And I'm like, sir, can I help you find something? And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm looking for the so and so building. I said, well, it's right here, but I don't think they have a. Um, a ramp here. I have to take you around. So I pushed him around, and we went into the building. And he, I said, I don't know if there's an elevator in here. And he says, you know, there's an elevator right inside next to the stairs. It didn't occur to me then that if you didn't know where the building is, how do you know where the elevator is? But I took him in, and I pressed the button for him, and <laughs> he wasn't there. <laughs> but, but I'm positive he was there. I know I was awake. Yep. I know I pushed a wheelchair. I know I know that when I looked at him and and, and and when I said, you know, when I pushed the button, I was like, here you go. When I think back, then I realized that he said, thanks, Steve. <gasps> and, and I, oh, I love so that story. Now, is that, is, that a, is that a ghost story? Is it an angel story? Is it, uh, what is it? But I know I wasn't asleep, and I know I didn't imagine it. Well, you know, it's, I have my theories about those things. And, you know, I, um, I've had one experience with, uh, um, I mean, I think that that could be either or, and I, I mean, Doreen Virch is the angel expert, but, um, you know, I've had, a, I've had a real experience where I know I saw an angel that was 30 feet tall, and I was, you know, in a, in a meditative state, although I was doing a massage with somebody, it was, and again, I, I wrote about that one in my first book, and it's on BeliefNet, by the way, if you, if you type in angels at, in BeliefNet and you put my name in, you'll see the whole article that was taken from my first book about me connecting to an angel. And it was huge and scary. <laughs> it was I'm like, sure. oh, my God, is that an angel? Oh, my God, it <laughs> sees me. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And then it was like these giant things that were like wings but weren't quite like wings. I could touch it, and I was completely awake. But, you know, I know that they, there's something called the earth angels where angels would come in and take human form, you know, um, and we don't, like, what do we know? But the point is is that you had an experience that was so meaningful and con- and it made you contemplate the potential of something outside the reality or the mundane existence that you have in your in your intellectual and visceral experience of that reality, right? So it's like, whoa, this is something bigger and, and beyond, and it is meaningful. So I think that just that alone is makes it something that is beyond the norm. And so does it matter if it was a ghost or an angel? You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it just, you know, I, I, I love to have, like, the... I just like to piece it all together. Like Einstein said, like the most inconceivable thing about this universe is that it's conceivable. You know, like I, yes. I want to just know Me it too. works. There's a reason why it works. Like it's not, it doesn't just randomly yeah. happen. There is an answer, and I, I would love uh, to know it. I know. I would, you know, and, but again, like do we really know? Like that's the other thing. I know there's an answer too. And I don't think any of us has really come up with that answer, but I want to be there when it happens. I, I do. You know hey, what I mean? Hey, everyone listening, uh, empoweredlivingradio.com yeah. is where you can get the, this, this interview. This is our second interview with Colette, so you have another hour-long interview uh, on empoweredlivingradio.com. Don't forget, it's free to download and visit Colette Baron reeds uh, site. It's C-O-L-E-T-T-E-B-A-R-O-N-R-E-I-D.com, and check out our book, Messages from the Spirit. We're going to keep going. we got 15 minutes left. Um, Chris Trent in Omaha, Nebraska. I love the chemistry between Colette and Steve. You make a great radio tag team. Colette, what does your intuition make you feel about the current political climate in the USA? Well, I just was responding to the, the tag team here because I think Steve and I should do a show together more often. <laughs> we definitely should. We'll, we'll definitely well, work on that. The politics thing is very interesting. And um, some information, uh, uh, which I think would be interesting to everybody here, um, I, in conversation with a numerologist friend of mine, Tanya Gabrielle, who writes a newsletter on my forum, you know, she uh, she shared with me some fascinating stuff about Barack Obama and John McCain. And she actually told me ages ago, and I knew intuitively, I said that it would be between Barack Obama and John McCain, and no matter who got in, it would be hugely impactful for the U.S., very, very positive. Either one of them would be good. Um, uh, but that it wouldn't be Hillary. 
And um, that was on my intuition. But I also intuitively felt that there was a connection between Barack and Abraham Lincoln, and I never knew why. So in two conversations I had, one with Tanya Gabrielle, another one with uh, Carolyn Mace, actually over dinner, um, that on, Carolyn explained to me that Barack has all the same, um, I think there's astrological influences and all kinds of same criteria as Abraham Lincoln did, even com- coming from the same state, the whole setup. Of, of how he was positioned and um, being the underdog and all that. Yeah, just amazing, Abraham Lincoln. And, and uh, Tanya said he has the same numbers as Abraham Lincoln, including the potential, and I'm going to say this on air, and I'm not saying that I'm saying that it's going to happen, for both him and John McCain, for it says the, a fall from a high place for assassination. Wow. So I hope that, and, it, and it kind of gave me the spooky feeling when I saw Barack Obama and I'm, I hope by saying it, it won't happen. Because sometimes when you voice something, that means that it can't happen. Because you, you prevent it by speaking it, right? Hmm. Um, uh, which is why they say don't, don't share your, your goals to too many right. people. Because by speaking it, you can prevent it because you change history. I agree. Always, I don't tell anybody anything ever. Yeah. That, well, I mean, I, I, yeah, I yeah. try not to, but I've got a blabbermouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell other people stuff, but, I, you know, with me, it's like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I always say I, you teach what you need to learn, you know what I mean? Right. So, but it was very interesting. And John McCain, too, has a similar thing, and, and around the election time. So the fall from a high place for either one of them, it could be that one loses the election to the other, right? Now, we don't know who, who and what. But um, I feel that, um, I, I mean, I'm obviously a Canadian, so and all Canadians are Democrats. <laughs> so that's why you don't want to annex Canada. Right? <laughs> Because you're going to get a bunch of gay, gay marriage, <laughs> legalized marijuana, you know, uh, socialists, right? <laughs> so we all look to the Democrats going, yeah. Um, but I don't know. You know, it's like uh, I, I just think it's going to – I think that this election and this, this, this is a historic moment for both, both of them, you know, uh, McCain and Obama. They both have their, their very positive um, – you know, things they could bring to the U.S., and maybe some negative stuff, too, both of them. But, um, you know, I'm going to think, I'm going to say I believe Barack Obama is going to win the election. You heard it here, folks. Yeah, and you're hey. going to have to erase that if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot, Chris. Trent, and <laughs>